is probably a little bit too early in the morning. Uh, hopefully, this presentation will be uh, uh, helpful to you guys you know, to give uh, an idea where we are with the NoSQL database security. Uh, again, uh, this is mainly uh, focused towards application developers. Uh, like we were talking just earlier, uh, the database security is not there you know, where, where we want it to be for the NoSQL databases. But you know, that should not stop us being uh, application developers or architects or, or even DBAs uh, to do whatever we can outside the database layer to control the, to put in the security rules in place. So we're going to talk about that, what we can do, and uh, where, where the, uh, most of the NoSQL database are today uh, in the security space. Again, forgot to say my name. So my name is Srini Penchikala. And the scope of this talk is mainly for application developers, like I, I mentioned. Uh, we look at uh, what's there right now and what's coming up. And if we, uh, this is a 45 minute talk, so, so not much time for, I usually I uh, talk about these topics for hour and a half or at least an hour. So we have some time to do demos. Uh, I try to do a lot of demos in my class because, uh, because that's the best way to learn you know, the concepts. But we, we may have time for one or two. And some of the databases, we look at them are those, but again, that doesn't mean that these are the only databases that are out there, or these are the only ones that uh, like I'm recommending or something. These are the ones I tried, and all these are open source. You can download and try it out. So that's uh, always the best thing to uh, do when you are uh, looking for new databases. So any, uh, how many of you are like uh, developers or architects versus, oh, okay, two, three, okay. And uh, I know other than you, uh, any like DBAs or DevOps, project managers? Actually, I'm, I'm basically from our team, data background. Okay. It's a good segue to yes. NoSQL. Right, right. So, so big data platform. Platform, okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm new to big data, you know, NoSQL data and so on and so forth. Right. Yeah, I think I should use that word new as more of a uh, uh, kind of loosely used term because, because I mean, if you know databases, you know databases, right? Uh, right, right, exactly. Right, because NoSQL database uh, in most of the uh, sense, you know, it's like not much different from any database. You still have to do your data modeling, database design, security, put all that in place. It is defined those first. Uh, the requirements, and then find a solution that fits those requirements, right? Don't let the solution drive your requirements, right? Uh, we're going to look at, uh, basically, uh, talk about, uh, we're not going to look at these uh, security vulnerabilities today. That's like SQL injections, cross-site scripting. That's a, that's a completely different talk. Uh, we're going to focus more on the application security side, authentication, authorization, encryption kind of thing. Uh, format is, uh, you know, kind of more, uh, you know, which, because it's a small uh, group, you know, so we can make it more interactive. So about the uh, presentation and demos, uh, about 40 minutes and maybe five minutes for Q&A. But if you have any questions uh, uh, during the talk, you know, just raise your hand or share your experience on any of these uh, topics. Uh, about myself, I work as a software architect for a, does it look okay? So I work as a software architect for a payment processing company in Austin, Texas. So when uh, a customer swipes their ca credit card, you know, we are one of the several uh, processing uh, vendors that are trying to make a you know, few cents of a dollar <laughs> uh, in the payment processing uh, business. I wrote a book last year called Spring Roo in Action, and I'm working on a NoSQL database patterns right now, which is coming, which is going really slowly. Uh, I'm also a lead editor at InfoQ.com, so I write a lot of articles, uh, write about the conference like these. Uh, but again, my background has been all financial services, so security is a uh, necessary evil for us. <laughs> we have to do it, right? And also, I kind of uh, had my own experience with uh, agile versus architecture and agile and architecture. Are they complementary or contradictory? All those uh, interesting stuff. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. So these are the different topics. Again, uh, time permitting, we may have to kind of rush through some of these slides. Uh, I have 50 slides. You know, usually they say have one slide for you know about two minutes. So we may have only time for 25 slides. So I may have to rush through some of the use case slides. But I did put the use case slides because I wanted to kind of show you guys which database uh, is good for what kind of use cases. So let's go uh, get started. Again, this is a, at a high level, you know, this is the uh, NoSQL database landscape. I did put, oh, actually I put it twice. So I did put relational database on the list because I would like to, uh, at least from my view, you know, we want to see these, all these new databases as an addition to the options we have rather than replacement to 
relational. You know, they all bring their own uh, uh, patterns, you know, document type or graph. You know, none of them are saying, you know, okay, document type is going to replace the relational type database or graph. You know, they all just bring additional options, you know, for uh, that specialized uh, data types. So now we have five, six, ten more options, you know, than only one option we had, which was a relational before, right? And the big data is also uh, related uh, uh, te technology that's happening. It's not really about storing the data. It's about the processing the data. But I, I, we should still look at that as a part of the overall uh, change that's happening. And same thing with the in-memory data grids. These are more uh, data is stored in the memory rather than the disk so to make it the uh, faster access and uh, the other uh, requirements. Uh, so it's not really a NoSQL database, but it, it definitely fits into the overall uh, NoSQL database technologies. These are some, some NoSQL database examples. I'm, I'm sure you already heard enough of this uh, during the last couple of days. MongoDB, Neo4j, React, and Redis are uh, key value databases. Cassandra is a columnar database. Uh, Hazelcast is an in memory data grid. Elasticsearch is more of a search framework, like a Lucene or Solar, if you guys are used to, used to that. Uh, it's kind of uh, helps to search the non unstructured data in the databases. So if you have a lot of text content, uh, website content, or anything else, you can, uh, you can use this tool to search the key, uh, based on the keywords. And Oracle NoSQL database, uh, it started as a key value database, but now I heard yesterday they are starting to support graph and uh, document as well. Uh, don't. So, so the yes. Oracle Time Stand, uh, I think it's more close to uh, Oracle Coherence. Terracotta, Coherence, uh, we have, what else, uh, Memcached kind of uh, thing. So Times 10 is more of a database. Uh, this is more of an in-memory data grid, you know, so. Okay. They may be close, but uh, it falls into more coherence uh, uh, category, so. So let's look at security, right? We always want to look at the security by architecture layer. Uh, so this is what it's like. It was kind of interesting. Like, you know, whenever we you, uh, hear about NoSQL databases, there is this uh, cap theorem, consistency, availability, and uh, partition tolerance. And a lot of these NoSQL no databases only offer two of those uh, aspects. Like Cassandra is a AP database, which uh, focuses on availability and partition tolerance, not so much on the consistency. So when it comes to security, we have to also in look at this new theorem, or new acronym, called the CIA. I mean, I mean listen, uh, new to us probably, not, not new to the security uh, folks. So the CIA stands for uh, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So, so CAP is good for performance and scalability, but CIA is also needed for the security side uh, of any database, including NoSQL databases. So confidentiality is basically, are the right users, authorized users, getting access to the right data, uh, or unauthorized users are trying to get, get to the access. And the integrity is basically the, over the data itself. Is it being tampered you know, when we transfer the data from one system to another system? Is it being uh, uh, modified by unauthorized users? And the availability is basically, you know, uh, availability of the systems. Bless you. Availability of the systems where, you know, uh, unauthorized users are not uh, bringing down the systems. So with NoSQL uh, being related to other, other technologies like cloud, mobile, and social, and all the other technologies, so there's a lot of data. It's always in motion. You know, a lot of data is being moved from uh, one system to another system. So definitely uh, confidentiality, integrity, and availability are very important, uh, even more important in NoSQL databases. Because in relational database, you store in one database. Uh, you may extract it and send it to other systems uh, once in a while, but it's not as uh, constant as it is in NoSQL. It's always, data is always moving from one place to another place. Uh, also, we, sometimes we take data from no relational database, put it into MongoDB for an analytics. So the data is... Uh, moving a lot, and we want to make sure that it's being done in a secure way. So some of the security concerns, uh, some of these are probably already familiar to you. So when it comes to data security, we have to uh, concern three, we have to consider three different uh, scenarios. So data at rest, which is when data is stored in the database, and it kind of stays static there. So that is the data at rest. So we want to make sure that secure, uh, data is secured when it is in the database, so no one is uh, Unauthorized users are not able to access the database, right? So this is where the encryption comes into picture. 
And data in motion is basically when you take a data extract from a database and then send it to a different system, whether internal or external. Uh, we do that a lot in the financial services industry, banks and credit card processing companies. We have a lot of data files coming in. We have a lot of data files going out, uh, especially ACH, which is uh, how the money transfers the, the entities. Uh, there's a lot of batch files. You know, we, we still use a lot of batch file processing, not real time uh, in, in most of the companies. So a lot of these uh, data is like you know, going back and forth. So you want to make sure that it is encrypted and uh, uh, actually, in security uh, industry, they also have what they call tagging. So each data type needs to be tagged. Is it uh, confidential or you know high, medium, low kind of security levels? So just like you know, when you send a package, if it is uh, uh, if there is a dangerous material, you put a tag on that, right? Like biohazard, whatever. So just like that, you know, there are these uh, uh, tags that we need to use for data sets. And data in use is uh, basically when you are using the data uh, in the application. You go to the database, you get the data out, and you display on the screen. So the user is actually uh, viewing the data and modifying the data. So that's the data in use. And this is, uh, this is where you have to decrypt the data so the user can, the authorized user can view the real data. And when they make any changes and when you store it, again, you have to encrypt that in the database. So those are three scenarios. Uh, when you're working in security industry, you know, these are very uh, familiar terms we use. And authentication is basically, are you who you say you are, you know, right? When a user logs in, uh, there are multiple levels of authentication, either user ID password combination, or user ID password and some third parameter, you know, it's called multi-factor multi, multi -factor authentication. So that's authentication, just a, just a login. And access control is basically, are you allowed, you, know, you are authenticated in the system, you are logged in, but are you allowed to perform this operation, are you allowed to view this data? You may be allowed to, view some other data, but on this specific data, right? So that is the users and roles and permissions uh, model. Uh, and then uh, finally, the data encryption is, you know, we talked about that already, how do you encrypt data so it's uh, not uh, viewed by unauthorized users in the system or outside the system. Uh, for that, the key management is very important. Uh, there are some companies that offer uh, key management services, or you can create your own keys, you know, so. Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, some products have what they call vault, V-A-U-L-T. I don't know how you pronounce. Uh, so uh, you can uh, uh, actually purchase those uh, products. So it's basically a wallet type of, a secure vault type of thing, you know. So you get a key out, you use it, and it expires. And then when you need one, you get one more, you know, so. So there are some products. Uh, mostly commercial products. Uh, I don't know if there are any open source products. The way we do it in my company, we have done this long time ago because we started uh, several years ago um, before any of this uh, took off. So we have our own key management system, which is not pretty, but it works. <laughs> there is a lot of manual, uh, manual work to be done uh, because we, uh, we uh, communicate with MasterCard and Visa, so every transaction has to have a key. So we both uh, need to know the key. So the way it works right now is not, not automated, but uh, uh, it works. You know? So it's secured, but it's, it can be more automated. So. Mm -hmm. And that's the one uh, uh, keynote yesterday, Adrian was talking about HSMs, right? Yeah. HSMs, okay. And I, got, I have a couple of names, I can, I don't want to mention the commercial product names in the talk, but I can talk to you after the, after the session, we can uh, mention a couple of names. Uh, and auditing is also very important, you know, we, we are doing all this authentication, uh, access control and encryption, but who is doing it, who is accessing what data, at what time, you know, uh, in case the system, gets into a situation where there is a fraud, a fraud activity, the auditing will always help in a poor after, the, after, the, after the event happens. So you want auditing uh, available out of any product you select. You don't want to write auditing uh, capabilities on these products because that, that will uh, be a full-time job and you won't have time to do the real job you are supposed to do. So I wanted to kind of uh, talk to you guys about this, you know, NoSQL database security holistic view, right? You know, we, Keep, uh, this conference is mainly about NoSQL databases, probably a little bit about big data. Uh, but but NoSQL database is only part of the overall data management lifecycle. Uh, so I wanted to kind of show you guys this and uh, uh, discuss this one right here. So NoSQL DBs security are definitely important. But let's uh, look at other uh, uh, similar uh, activities that happen in the data management lifecycle. 
So NoSQL DBs are used mainly for storage, but we are not going to just store the data and leave it there forever, right? We're going to process that for whatever queries or search or uh, data mining purposes. And we also want to have faster access, you know, so that's where the in-memory data grids come into picture, right? We, if it's in the disk, you know, it's always uh, going to be slower to access. And we have the hosting options now. You know, previously we used to have only, probably five years ago, we used to have only buy versus build. You know, when we have a new product idea, uh, do we build it or do we buy it from outside? But now we have a third option, buy versus build versus host on the cloud. So definitely the hosting is uh, uh, also part of the security considerations. Then we have the interaction between uh, the data or, or users of data. And this is where the social comes into picture, whether it's Facebook or the graph uh, relationships. So definitely the data is being used by users to interact with each other. So that's another concern we need to keep in mind. And finally, the end user devices in all this data is being used by users on their devices, right? Whether it's a laptop, which is probably become extinct you know, pretty soon, uh, smartphones and tablets are main end users. So all those concerns are very important. You know, just the storage is one thing. Uh, you can make it as secure as you want on, on this box. But how about the other ones? You know, when the data is being used, is being processed, is being uh, hosted. You know, so so that's where all those the other uh, uh, hexagons. Uh, I, I just put the concerns here first. You know, we always want to start with the concerns and uh, requirements, and then look at the technologies. So this slide actually shows those corresponding technologies. So we have NoSQL DB uh, database on the top, and then big data, in-memory data grids cloud, social computing, and mobile at the end. So, so when you think about so, uh, security or NoSQL security, think about all these other uh, areas as well. Because you can have as secure uh, database as you want, but if uh, whoever is using that is not, uh, it's not secure, you know, that's going to be a concern, right? So any other comments on this slide? Uh, do you guys uh, have anything uh, like a social or mobile security, I guess, looking at that? Yeah, go ahead. Right. Yeah, that's definitely a, a good concern even without NoSQL databases. Uh, also, with the cloud, you have a lot of different scenarios. You may be uh, running your application in the cloud, and but the database is uh, in your data center. That's more secure uh, type of approach. Uh, but maybe you have database and application running on the cloud. So there are all different scenarios, right? So definitely, I think cloud security is a big topic. Uh, I haven't, uh, I don't have a lot of experience on that. Because right now at my company, everything is in-house. We have our own data centers, which I am not a big fan of. We definitely want to go to the cloud you know, to be cost effective. But yeah, we can probably talk about that after the session. So how, how do you do it? OK. I also want to talk to about this, uh, the term polyglot, polyglot persistence. Uh, we're going to hear about this a lot. You know, that, that again, going back to his question, we have relational databases. They are not going anywhere. And we have a new database now. So if we were having challenges with one database, one database type in the past, now multiply that by 10 times, 20 times, and right? So uh, not only from how do we access the data, but also how do we secure the data, right? So that's where the cross-persistence, cross-store persistence or polyglot persistence techniques are going to help us a little bit. Now they're, they're also going to add more uh, downside as well, but, uh, but on the good side, you know, you will uh, have one database, one data access layer. So you just write, let's say you are a Java developer. Uh, However, you are using right now to persist, let's say you are using JPA technology, Java Persistence API, to persist into a relational database. You can use a very similar approach to persist your objects, whether they are graph of objects, or document type object, or key value object, or column, or whatever the data type, right? Or something new in the future. Uh, you can persist them into the respective NoSQL databases using very similar API. So you don't have to learn uh, uh, document API or MongoDB API or Neo4j API, because they're all very different. They have their own API right now. Uh, either you can learn 10 different uh, API, which definitely are going to change really fast. So keeping up, uh, up, to, the, uh, up to speed with the, keeping them with the up-to-date is always going to be difficult. So how do we do that, right? So polygraph percent is definitely going to help us. Basically, the idea is we, uh, we want to store different types of data in different NoSQL databases. We want to have a common data access layer. And again, security is going to be more critical because now we have multiple databases. How do you manage the security uh, on all those databases? 
So one option is uh, manage the security uh, in the service and domain layer, you know, so where you have your application logic running. So that's where you can say, if a user comes to the service layer and say, I need access to this data, data set, and if the user is not authorized, you can block the user right there, right? Uh, instead of sending the query all the way to database, uh, which may be too late sometimes you know, in, in protecting the data. So domain, uh, domain and service layer or application layer is one choice. But again, uh, sec uh, with security, you always want to secure uh, in all layers as much as possible. So when I say secure, uh, put the security in application layer, I don't mean ignore the security in other layers. So you need security in all layers uh, as applicable. I think my uh, view on that is basically you always want to have a data services model. So even data, databases, whether they are NoSQL or flat file or relational or something else, they're never accessed directly by your clients. You want to have a service layer in between, service model, like data, data services, right? Yeah, so in the model I'm talking about, there, are, there will be a data services layer in between. So company A, company B, company Z, they always have to call this service. They cannot access the database directly. But if someone malicious has hacked your data, Well, I mean, that's a, that's a security incident, right? So, yeah. But ideally, API contract-wise, mm -hmm. your partners, trading partners should be talking to a service, mm -hmm. and that's where you actually manage the security, and then only when that passes or checks out, you, you let them go to the database. So. Right, right. So you don't put the security on the data store layer. Oh, yeah, you, still, you still need data, uh, security on the database, uh, data store layer, right? So, so you can always say, okay, my database is running on this IP address. My service is running on this IP address. So only allow access to this IP address from this IP address. So if someone tries to go bypass, they, won't, they will be denied, right? So I mean, there are different options. You know, so that's, I mean, a lot of those things are very similar to how relation, relation database works. I mean, that, that hasn't changed much. You, Again, the hackers are out there, you know, so <laughs> probably getting really bad, really big every day, and that is the uh, same same discipline applies for that. Okay, I uh, just want to kind of show you this diagram again. This is kind of illust illustrate the same concept. So we have a an application on top with all these different types of data, graph data, document data, uh, key value, and we need to save that into all these multiple different databases. So how do we go about that without having to? learn a lot of different languages and techniques. And again, this goes back to your question on different layers. So you want to have, as an organization, you want to have security at these different levels. You want to protect the data record, uh, but you also want to protect the application wire protocol level, uh, like HTTP or HTTPS. And you also want to secure the server, you want to secure the network, and you want to secure the location, physical security, right? So a lot of times you may have the best computer technology, computer security in place. But if someone can just walk into your building and take your uh, backup uh, tape, and then is they're able to decrypt that, so you just lost your, uh, you know, you just had a security incident. So all those things are very important. So, how many of you guys like have to deal with uh, security compliance uh, requirements? FISMA, PCI, HIPAA. Exactly, I, know, I definitely you kind of know what you know those uh, different security levels mean. <coughs> This is again, uh, I just want to show you guys this diagram. This is the relationship model, uh, relationship database uh, world, I guess, you know, where we had these uh, simple layers to manage. Uh, everything was uh, you know, uh, pretty cool. And then once uh, we got into NoSQL database world, one database became multiple databases, and one or two APIs became you know, several different APIs. But we still want to have this data access layer that we can use to manage all this uh, uh, complexity. And the frameworks like Spring, uh, Spring Data is one framework I talked about a couple of days ago. Uh, uh, Spring Data framework is exactly does that. It basically uh, has support for all the NoSQL databases, almost, almost all of them. So you can say, uh, this is my Java object. I want to pass this into MongoDB. You can do that using just Java API. 
uh, same on the consistent API. You don't have to uh, use different APIs for that. And uh, let's look at the, yeah, this is, uh, again, these slides are basically security by uh, architecture layer. So one layer you want to control security is in domain layer. So when you have a customer object and when you instantiate that someone is calling the customer object, you want to make sure that the client is authorized to call that uh, object in that context. So Spring Security is one framework that uh, does this pretty good. Uh, also, you can uh, use any other framework that has a uh, access control list uh, support. So, when, uh, so we are controlling the domain level uh, security here. And also there is a service layer security you want to consider. So when you have a customer object and order object, uh, and then there is a process order service, you know, uh, calls those objects, you want to make sure that uh, they're calling in the right context for the right parameters from a security standpoint. So that's the method level security. Again, uh, in uh, Java, uh, Java world, you can annotate that method, so giving uh, like a roles allowed, you know, only allow these roles to call this method. And I'll uh, show you an example on that. And this is also a standard in Java uh, world, you know, for this uh, type of uh, annotations. It's JSR 250, Java specification request. So it's a standard, basically. Uh, if you're using Java, you know, this makes sense. If you're uh, not a Java developer, then uh, there might be other standards. So these are some of the annotations that you can use to secure the methods. Roles allowed, secured, pre-authorized. You know, pre-authorized means you know this has to happen before uh, they can call this method. Let's quickly look at the demo. You know, so I'm sure you guys are a bit bored with the slides. You know, so for example, you know, one way to one way that I have done in my past life uh, is uh, how do we enforce these security rules? There are a lot of security rules. How do we enforce them, right, with the, with the developers? If someone writes a Java, Java method without the security layer, let me see if I can. Uh, how do we uh, create a framework that will notify them that you know that's not the right way to? So let's go ahead and create. You know, let's say I'm a Java developer. I'm working on this loan service. Again, this is a test class. You know, there's not much uh, logic here, but I'm going to create a new method: process loan approval with conditions. So when you apply for a loan, uh, either it's approved or it's denied or it's approved with conditions. You now I need this additional documentation only then I can I'll approve this. So let's say I'm uh, working the uh, working on that method. So now I create this new method, and uh, so far so good. And I'm going to save this. So it should have flagged me. Do that. So you should have flagged me up with this uh, role not allowed. Let's see why it's not doing that. Loan service. Try this again real quick. Yeah, something is uh, definitely is Eclipse Five is probably not working. Let me try to clean this. Build. Oh, yeah, okay, that was off. Okay. So it was not compiling online. So now if it uh, compiles, let's see. Okay, okay. So you guys see that, uh, see that marker right there? So when I uh, hover my mouse over there, it, will, it says, all public business methods in a service class must have role annotation. So what we are doing was we are enforcing the developers to make sure that whenever they create a public method in a service class, we want it to be secure, right? So I am doing this with a, with a custom framework that I wrote to enforce these security rules. So now the developer knows that they need to add an annotation, I mean, secure this method. Let's say this particular uh, method needs to be, can only be called by a user who is logged in as, who is, who is a underwriting manager, because this is with conditions. 
And so once I add that and save it, so if everything goes well, it should uh, the f the error flag should go away. This should go away. So let's wait for that. Yeah, I just have a lot of projects open here. That's why it's compiling all the projects, taking a little bit of extra time. And I think uh, because the demos are taking a long time, so we're going to probably skip demos and just go to the slides next. OK. Let's go here. OK, there it is now. So the error is gone. So you can uh, basically see how, how this works. So if I again take comment out, the error comes back. So this is one way to, I mean, again, this is uh, not directly related to NoSQL database security, but this is uh, the way you can build build security into your applications, right? Okay. So let's uh, jump to demos, you know, so, uh, I mean, let's skip demos because we don't have time. Okay, again, on the con uh, we talked about service layer, a uh, control layer is the same way. A lot of these uh, NoSQL databases, they expose their uh, data uh, database as a, uh, through REST web service, REST uh, based interface. So REST is a common way to access databases. And the earlier, uh, I mentioned about data services. We implemented a data service model based on the REST, uh, REST technology. So uh, that's the best, uh, the most common way to uh, access and update the data. So we want to make sure that we secure those URLs. And you can do that by using a, a security frameworks like OWASP or Spring Security. I have a quick uh, example here to show you guys how it's done. Uh, this is not a demo, I'm just going to show the file here. Okay, right here. So this is a Spring Security XML file. If you uh, look at here, you can see the, I don't know if that's clear. So you can see the intercept URL. You basically give a pattern of the URL. And you say what kind of HTTP method is it delete or uh, post or update, I'm sorry, get or post. And you say the whoever is calling this URL has to have, has to have this role, like a role admin or role student in this example. So you can control like any URL you have to your database tables. Uh, you can control that using a framework like this. So if some user uh, lo is logged in but he's not an admin, when they try to call this URL from browser or from other framework or from other company, uh, they, it will uh, it will throw an error. Like uh, I think it will either throw 403. You can catch and display a different message. So definitely it will say you are not allowed to uh, perform this operation. And the data encryption, like I said, uh, we need that for uh, at rest and in motion. Uh, we want to do the encryption in real time. You don't want to, <coughs> bless you. You don't want to store the data and then uh, encrypt it tomorrow. <laughs> if, it, uh, if you don't, if you wait till tomorrow to encrypt, you know, someone might get the data today and then uh, uh, use it in plain, plain text, right? Uh, again, you know, uh, one uh, option to encrypt the data is in the application layer because you know that's, that's when you create the data and or modify the data. So that's the best place to encrypt as well. And some databases, you know, especially in the relational databases, they offer encryption, built-in encryption in the database itself. Uh, but if you want to use any Java frameworks, uh, these are some of the examples. All of, the, all of them are open source. OWASP, uh, ESAPI, uh, Shiro, or JASIT. And I have used all these three uh, in my previous projects. So let's quickly jump into each of the database types. We have 10 minutes left uh, uh, for the session, so let's quickly go through this. So document database use cases, you must have already seen this several times. They're good for uh, content management systems. Uh, logging is another use case. From a security wise, uh, I took MongoDB as an example. Uh, they do provide authentication. They recently added uh, Kerberos authentication. They also provide access control. Uh, they recently added uh, role-based privileges for the access control. Uh, these two actually came in uh, version 2.4. Uh, and then they are actually working with uh, a, oh, there you go, commercial product vendor. They are working with a company called Gazang uh, to encrypt uh, uh, and secure sensitive data within Mongo. So they have a partnership with, uh, at least, I mean, uh, I think it's good to see the NoSQL database vendors who have their hands full improving their product, or at least working with the security vendors to get the security into, right? So if, if they can create security, uh, if they can develop security features, they can work with other, uh, other companies to uh, integrate security. So that's a uh, document database. So again, probably MongoDB is probably more matured in that sense. Again, not compared to, uh, not, not, not where it should be, but. Uh, and then the Gazang uh, product is called Z-Encrypt. They have uh, transparent data encryption. 
they also have good key management, uh, process-based controls, you know, so each access, uh, data access request is verified based on the process, based on the user, and they support these uh, NoSQL databases. So if you are looking at any of these and you want to secure them, uh, one option is to talk to these guys. And they also support uh, the security for cloud platforms. So with the database, you know, we uh, heard about this in other, other talks as well. So NoSQL database support, most of them support the sharding, the partitioning. So when you have one database, physical database, you are storing the data, you only have to protect that single instance. But when you partition, you basically end up having multiple instances of the database with uh, different sets of data, uh, different parts of the same data, basically. So now you have multiple instances to secure. So, so, so sharding, uh, whether it's good or bad, you know, that's a different discussion. But sharding definitely makes security a bit more complex because now you have multiple entry points uh, into your data layer, database layer. Uh, again, uh, one option to uh, manage this is in the application layer uh, uh, as well. And also you can use uh, uh, security logging and auditing is another uh, aspect where you can use MongoDB to store secure logging into a separate, separate uh, uh, table versus the regular logging. If you have a, and we have some, some companies have a requirement like this. All the security related, uh, uh, audit, uh, the logging has to go into a different file or a different database. So only security team can, uh, can view that. So you can use MongoDB has a, uh, provides a, uh, MongoDB is a good uh, database for the logging. And Spring Data provides a built-in appender to do that, log4j appender. And also the, with all the big data and uh, NoSQL databases in the security space, uh, we're going to hear a lot about security analytics. How do we find fraud faster than we are able to do today? So all this data mining, and you know, it's going to be even more used uh, in the security BI, business intelligence, as well as security information and event management uh, uh, areas. So this is like how fast you can find, you know, if a fraud act, uh, occurred or if a security event occurred. Okay, like I said, you know, we probably let's skip the demos. Uh, graph databases, you know, they're good for uh, social networking, data center management, fraud detection. Uh, I took a Neo4j as an example for graph security. So again, they don't have uh, data level security. Uh, they're probably uh, not, uh, even not there, you know, compared to other uh, Mongo, uh, MongoDB or Cassandra, because they say, you know, you always want to protect you know, Neo4j from uh, security-wise, you know, by fronting a Apache web server or server container. Uh, they do have some security rules for more authorization, but uh, it's not a, not a black box, you know, when it comes to security. Uh, key value data stores, uh, this is the Redis and Re uh, React databases. They can be used as a cache, messaging systems, or mobile data storage. And uh, in this, in this uh, area, I looked at two different databases. Accumulo is from Apache. It's uh, based on the big data model. Uh, I think this is probably one of the new databases that has more security compared to uh, other database products. So they provide what they call cell level security. So the security is down to the record level, you know, so each, you know, so not, not even record, it's a cell level. So if I run a query and if someone else runs a query and if we both have different privileges, the records I get horizontally and vertically, the columns and records I get, columns and rows I get are, would be different from the columns and rows the other user gets. So there is a vertical and horizontal uh, restriction on the uh, on the queries, which is uh, which is the best way to do it, right? And then the basically data, yeah, this is the same thing. Data of security, uh, different security levels can be stored in the same row, so you don't have to create multiple different databases uh, to address the security requirements. And uh, the other uh, database I looked at is uh, called Redis. Again, this is one of those uh, databases that. Uh, expects us to run in a trusted environment. So you have to have that IP restriction, so the database server can only respond to the application server, uh, no one else outside of that. So you want to create those IP, uh, IP level uh, restrictions. And you can enable authentication uh, from this conference, uh, configuration file. They don't have no access control, they don't have encryption, so. But again, I think uh, they're uh, probably working towards those. Columnar databases. Again, use cases are content management, analytics, logging. Uh, Cassandra, you know, I think they have probably better uh, security API compared to the other ones. They provide their own uh, API for security, but they're also working with Gazang on uh, providing the encryption and key management as well. 
big data uh, quickly let's look at the hadoop security uh, they have good authentication and authorization model file map permissions are there you can also because with hadoop you are running a lot of jobs so you can uh, create the job tokens to uh, secure those as well so only authorized users are running the jobs and also there is a delegation tokens for uh, you know subsequent authentication so if you authenticate and then you come back again so you, uh, there are tokens to kind of more like remember me type of uh, scenario uh, in memory data grids uh, i looked at a hazel hazel cast uh, has uh, definitely decent security uh, support they have a native client security uh, which includes authentication authorization and uh, also cluster member security because with the uh, hazel cast you are running multiple instances in the cluster so security becomes uh, also important and the other uh, uh, in memory data grid i looked at is called the grid gain which also has authentication and uh, connectivity security emerging trends you know again like, uh, some of these are happening in the no sql space now uh, the, there are these uh, multi model databases coming out that actually support more than one no sql database type so for example orient db supports uh, document type as well as graph data type so if you use orient db you already have those two capabilities but now with that comes uh, the security as well right now how do i secure document type data how do i secure graph data so multi model databases are going to help us in one way but also if they don't support security out of the box then it's going to be a challenge uh, same thing with polyglot persistent stores we will see more database in the future database products you know that will start supporting a, uh, pretty much if not all you know most of the data no sql data types so we may have one database in the future that will support all no sql data types and also the other uh, emerging trend i'm seeing is uh, big data analytics how can we do that in real time so usually big data analytics like you store the data and then you do a lot of processing and then you get the results after the fact but how can we do those uh, uh, queries and how can we do that processing while the data is being uh, created and modified so we're going to hear a lot about this in the future it's probably happening i guess with all the recent uh, uh, stories about uh, tracking our data you know whatever we do and the security standards is uh, something i would like to see more uh, uh, progress in this there are no like a standard groups or anything right now in nosql uh, they are just trying to catch up with the uh, uh, other products you know, in terms of features uh, so security is not getting as much uh, security standards are not getting as much attention as they should and i see in the future you are going to see uh, omni sql type of uh, uh, concept where one sec one database will support all the database types all the data types and also we also talked about this all the other technology you want to look at so i just put this uh, uh, like if you are using if you are using no sql databases for uh, any security use cases because in you know, a lot of the security use case i i have uh, worked on this in my uh, previous projects but i always had to work with a relation database and i ran into a lot of challenges because my data was unstructured uh, but relationship uh, database doesn't work it you know so so now i can for the same use case i can use these uh, new database type new no sql databases security logging and seam i can use document uh, database managing the user profiles graph is the best way to go ldap and you know creating multiple different tables in oracle are not the uh, probably the be best solutions and any session management you know we always had to create our own custom solutions for this now we can use a key value database and uh, like i said earlier uh, analytics big data is uh, is is there to provide you faster uh, analytics and faster uh, uh, fraud detection uh, uh, capabilities quickly oh we are already running uh, running over actually so quickly uh, uh, best practices you know you always want to do the def defense in depth uh, make sure that you uh, restrict the uh, security at network level uh, specify the ip addresses so no one else can uh, access them from outside uh, think about securing the, the data itself the tables or collections and you know what to look for uh, in a vendor make sure that you know they support security ask them as many questions as you should about security itself you know don't pick a database and then realize that it doesn't have any security that you need or you have to write from scratch also monitoring and auditing is also important that's it you know the last slide is uh, like always say one size fits all fits nothing so analyze your requirements first and make sure that uh, your requirements are helping you to get to the solution don't pick a solution and then let the solution or the vendor change your requirements i uh, think about the security through the data management life cycle because uh, as soon as you start the data modeling the data security should be thought about so i always tell uh, tell my team like uh, build security into the solution not bolt it on later you know you don't want to bolt it on later because uh, it's not an afterthought you know it should be thought about as a, that's why what we do is like when we work on the new projects we always document all the security requirements uh, along with business requirements and they are they are part of the requirements uh, uh, set 
that needs to be prioritized. You know, when the business says, you know, I, why is this high priority? We explain to them why security is a high priority. And that's it, you know, uh, my contact information, uh, sorry, I took a few more, few more minutes, but uh, if you have any questions later, you know, so just send me an email. Other than that, uh, do you have any questions right now? Any questions or comments, uh, security, where do you guys see? So are you going to the Yes, I'll uh, give it then. I made some few changes uh, from the previous question, but uh, I'll uh, give it to the uh, organizers. You know, so. Cool. Thanks all for coming. Enjoy the rest of the, rest of the day, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to use some of these uh, databases when you go back to work. Thank you.